On this episode of Content Sessions, we talk with Matthew Weeks about starting a podcast. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. I'm super glad we got to do this finally. Yeah. On a, on a random rainy ass Saturday. <laughs> yeah. It was a perfect time. It was great. Like I, I like that like you messaged me literally like the day before. And you're just like, hey, just come down. And it was like yeah. so it's just much easier than I anticipated. It's great. <laughs> Good. Well, I'll tell you the uh, the online booking shit that I use is like yeah. the greatest time saver of my entire life oh, too. For so. sure. Oh, that's how we booked the first one, but yeah. then you got busy. So yeah. glad we got to do it. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, yeah, so I'm a, a software engineer. Uh, I work at a company called Quantum Mob, which is how we met at, by the week before I started. It came out to the, that's right. the uh, event. Um, and yeah, so uh, I guess I work as a team lead, senior software engineer. So I work with teams um, to just like build software for the most part. Um, I'm really passionate kind of about like the the process of getting software built and like how people work together on a team and, and how you actually get things to, to go from far, start to finish and keep your team happy. So it's, it's it. kind of like a neat mix. Process guy. Yeah, process. Very cool. And how long have you been in the software space as a whole? Um, so I've been working uh, since 2014. So I started off as like just a solo guy at a media company. We were just building the websites. Um, ended up having to like hire a few interns and then like worked with that team um so kind of just like taught myself web there and then moved on to like trying to do some freelance and keep working for uh that company for a couple of years um and then in the process like you know built a few startups with a couple of guys and um not a, one of them worked out pretty well most of them were pretty uh <laughs> pretty much just spun spinning wheels but yeah. we were trying our best and uh then finally uh decided to go back I finished school and then decided to like work full time into the city and get the big, big, uh, big software world experience, I guess. Nice. Nice. And so that's, uh, what was the product series. that you built that was good? Uh, it was called pepper filters. Um, so it was like a Snapchat geo filter, mm. uh, builder. So like right when Snapchat built their released their, uh, their, their geo filters, you can just yep. create your own geo filters or whatever. It was really hard. So a guy named Brennan, contacted me and my friend or contacted a bunch of people and then we just kind of applied for this thing we flew to mexico the next week uh to just meet up with these guys and and build uh, the prototype for the app <laughs> so it was uh like three of us you know me and my friend matt and then uh designer melissa and then the two co-founders brennan and daniel and uh yeah we just spent a week in mexico built an app drank a bunch of beer and uh <laughs> And then uh, launched it like a month later. So uh, it was, you know, just helps people drag and drop uh, right. images and create like a geo filter. And then just up their business model was just, we'll charge you to, for us to upload it to Snapchat for you. Got it. And uh, they made, you know, they kept going for like the last four years. So, nice. uh, so it's been And are well. you still part of it in any way? or? Uh, no. no. So once we built the prototype, um, some stuff happened between us and the, the founders. So we just kind of parted ways. Yeah. Um, just didn't really make sense, I guess. And then, yeah. You know. Yeah. I, I hear about so. that. I hear that. <laughs> I hear about that kind of stuff a lot. It happens, man. Yeah. It's, it's business. Like, it's so weird because it's it's your baby yeah and you've got so much like you've got so much attention on it and so much this and this and that and then you've yeah. got if you've got people pulling from different directions with different opinions or agendas you're mm -hmm. like no that's not how i see it going yeah <laughs> right it can get weird and it's just like the team dynamics <laughs> like it's it's yeah it can always just be like you know that's why i learned like if yeah. i'm ever going to start something like have concrete like <laughs> like like a some sort of like paperwork or like even yeah. just like an agreement between all the founders like just yeah. mutual understanding because you know that stuff just gets messy and then like i don't know i've heard horror stories like you know mm -hmm. there's the whole like facebook story but i'm sure it happens all the time yeah with uh teams and yeah and whatnot so. well and it's good to learn on a project at that early stage like yeah. i when i first tried to go into like the software space not that i've ever coded but we just yeah. had this idea and we started building it and and we were like the, the we all got along and like nothing like that happened but there were so many little things that we like brutally fucked up and I was oh like, yeah man I know how to not fucking run a company now. Like you learn so much stuff not to do really fast. So yeah. it's good to learn that lesson now, right? And then as you start planning for the next thing, or if you have an idea that could be like a really big scale or whatever, you're like, oh yeah, I know the mistakes to not make. So those yeah. are all super valuable stuff. I, 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 I got the, I got this kind of like the same experience trying to do freelancing mm -hmm. on my own too. Yeah. Uh, just because like, the, you know, the sales cycle, like actually talking to clients and and scoping work is like yeah. always like even working in an agency now like i still mm. see it every 
project like something might go wrong or yeah. like something changes that in the scope of the project and like you know as a solo guy you just don't know how to deal with that <laughs> right like, yeah. yeah and so were you uh how long did you freelance freelance for like did you yeah were you on um, that for a while or that where you were just supporting fully of that yeah. yeah so i did that from i guess two years three years um i did it up until uh 2017 and i started it in like 2014 but i was doing it part-time when i had a job Got and then i kind of went full-time in 2015 2016 and then eventually that like fully replaced my income and then i was able to just kind of live off of the the freelancing work and then nice. eventually thought like you know i I applied for a job in Australia and I couldn't get a visa. Ah. And so I was like, I gotta go and finish school. <laughs> so went back and, uh, and did that. Cause like, it's just, you know, that sort of stuff. Like I don't think I'll ever, I never even went to Australia. I don't know right. if it'll ever come back, but yeah. at least I got it. <laughs> nice. And what was the schooling? What was the program? Uh, computer science. Got so it. yeah. Cool. All right. So let's talk about podcasts. I know we, uh, you know, we met at this party, yeah. uh, the opening party and you, you know, we were talking about my, my podcast and you had mm -hmm. mentioned, Hey, I like, I really like the idea, but I'm not sure how it can go, how it can start. So yeah. tell me, tell me a little bit about the idea. What's the kind of core idea you've got for it? Yeah. So initially I was kind of thinking like, what I don't, what I like about podcasting is like, you know, you get to hear about a story in a way you wouldn't like kind of know about it from like a news article or something like that. It's like just mm -hmm. someone talking about their lives. Yeah. And I noticed that like a lot of them, just because, you know, it's kind of like, you know, business focus, like, you know, if you're trying to get clients with say fortune 500s, you're going to interview the fortune 500s, like senior directors or the, like the people are going to hire you. Right. right? Um, but there's not a whole lot for like that middle ground where like, okay, like I'm a software engineer. Um, I'm, and maybe it's my first job and I'm starting mm -hmm. out a team. Like how does, how do you work together as a team? Like how does this stuff get done? And I, I would love to expand it to other stuff. But, you know, obviously stick within my current niche, at least, because I'm not, you know, I'm not going to know about like um, necessarily like an e-commerce business. Maybe right. I would, but yeah. kind of like talking to like the, the people on the ground level. Yep. Um, maybe like team leads, designers, product managers, um, engineers, um, like marketers, uh, just and like whatever, like HR. Yep. I don't know, like anything. And you can kind of just like talk about like, OK, what's your job? how do you get it done like and then maybe if they have some specific like direction they want to go like got it um yeah no like maybe they want to have a message they want to do but what, what i found when i talked to people that were like worked with me um the the concern everyone had was like oh, i don't have anything to talk about and i'm like right. that's why like i want to make it super simple it's just right. us talking about what you do yep and then you know you don't have to be an expert on anything because everyone mm -hmm kind of is an expert on their job but yeah. like we don't necessarily like all have a personal brand or yeah. like oh i'm the like even like tech podcasts like they always end up falling into like that kind of like um like people go like content form to content form and they're mm -hmm. always talking about the same thing oh, i'm the accessibility guy or girl or i'm the um the marketing person or the analytics person and i think that's cool mm -hmm. um but like i miss kind of like that you know how do those people get started? Like when they first started, they probably had nothing right. necessarily that they were like focused on, you know? Yep. Makes um, sense. Yeah. And so what I always kind of start with, so why I started this one, because I can't yeah. write yeah. at all. <laughs> uh, like I, my grammar, my sentence, my spelling, it's all terrible. Even yeah. with Grammarly, it's not going to happen. Um, and I knew the business needed to put out content to mm -hmm. generate awareness and build credibility. And it's a lead generating tool for me. So okay. it's obviously different for you where you're not doing the lead generation. So, mm -hmm. What would you say is your why? Is it just from a standpoint of like, I just want to like build a network. I want to build a name for myself. Yeah. I just want to create cool shit. So there's, I mean, obviously like it's kind of cool to be maybe build like a personal brand or like, you know, build up something for myself, like mm -hmm. a following or like a network or whatever. Um, definitely in the networking part. Um, what I like, what I would want to accomplish is like, say I have like a new developer that I meet at a boot camp because I go to these meetups like U of T boot camps does mm -hmm. like uh, every quarter they do like a, uh, like a demo of all the stuff that people built and the cool shit that they like hacked together right. the weekend before. And then same with Juno and hack, formerly hacker you. And so I love it when I get to go to that stuff and then like developers are always like, okay, how'd you get started? Or like, how do I get a job or whatever? Mm -hmm. So I'd love to be able to like turn that into like, well, I mean like these are the soft skills. Like, yeah, you know how to code. And then maybe you don't even necessarily need to be the best coder 
to really like level up your team. Like if you know how to work with people and come up with requirements and 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 take like an idea and turn it into a design or into um, like a, even like as boring as it is like a product backlog where you just have like a to do list of right. items and you know you know how hard they're gonna be, how long they're gonna take, and you can kind of like plan your process like. I think that's the stuff no one really gets to know until they've worked. And then that's the whole thing where it's like, mm -hmm. you know, we need job experience so you can get a job, but you want an entry level job. And if you have a degree, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier. Um, or if you're like, you know, maybe you can, you're one of those lucky guys that's like, get has like a huge Instagram following and you, right. or you Twitter following and you, you get at like, like all big companies and all that, like you get poached or whatever. Right. But for everyone else, like the average person, like, you know, it's, you know, you finish a boot camp or something and you're coming from another job, like how do you take that and then transfer that into software? And I feel like those guys, those folks, like they tend to have a more interesting background. So yeah. like I have friends that were like doing like biochemistry or like they were accountants before and I've met people who are lawyers and all that. And then they got into programming, but like because they know how to work with a team, it's different. But right. I just think they all have a lot of people have anxiety as they're trying to get into a job. So, right. Like, I guess the big win would be, I, I have something that I can share to somebody that is new and they'll look at it and they'll be like, Oh, like, okay. I'm like, not nervous about this. Like I know how to okay. work in, in a team. Got it. Yeah. Okay. No, I like that. Yeah. And then that, so I was trying to yeah, that really flushed it out. I think you've, you've really considered it, uh, you know, like it feels like you've got already kind of gone pretty far down the path. Yeah. Of thinking about the why. Yes. So yeah. that's good. So, okay. So I like that concept. And I think what I would think about is like, okay, so your goal is to bring content to provide comfortability or maybe enhance people's ability to get a job or enhance people's lives by mm -hmm. learning for, about others. Um, and so I like that as a good, that's a really strong base. Yeah. So what, how I would think about it is, what they also want to know. So you've talked to the people, how they developed. I think the other side of that coin, the other mm -hmm. part of the conversation, the other episodes that you should have should be with some of the founders and leaders and yeah. hiring people as well. Cause I think it would do a good job complimenting. You know what I mean? So right. how do you look at resumes? How do you conduct interviews? What's the like one, what's your one question? How do you guys, build a team? How are you guys psychologically evaluating someone as they're coming in? Right. And so you have both sides, like the how I did it from the employee side, and mm -hmm. then also maybe how, how it works from the employer side. Yeah, okay. Right? No, that makes a lot of sense. And then like, you could even bring on people that are hiring and just say like, mm -hmm. what are you looking for? And like, what do you, how do you evaluate candidates? And what do you think about when you're mm -hmm. like talking? I, I never thought of that. That's like, that would be awesome. Yeah. And I think it gives a really good compliment because then you get content from both sides. Yeah. Actually, do you, do you, uh, do you read the hustle? Uh, I do. Yeah, yeah. Right. Have you, do you, are you part of trends? Which I'm is not their... yet, but right. I've thought about buying it because right. it's like, it's a dollar for the first it's a, it's month. It's really, or something. really it's good. Like, yeah. I'm on it. So, um, they're, they have a podcast as well. It's yeah. called My First Million. I love it. Yeah. Right. And so actually, as you're saying this, I'm thinking about this little side hustle piece, not to say that this is where it needs to go, yeah. but maybe if you had somebody else that wanted to work on it in tandem with your content, mm -hmm. they were talking about niche job boards. So mm -hmm. every Friday, Sam will go on to the podcast, the My First Million, and they just do these things called Million Dollar Brainstorms. Yeah. I've where seen they, one episode of it, but I haven't. It's so okay. So they do, they did one about how like there's all these like massive job platforms mm -hmm. um monster i don't know what the other ones yeah, are yeah monster indeed. i've been applied for a job in a really um, long time yeah. <laughs> but indeed and all these big ones right yeah, i don't actually like, use those I, I think it's always like linkedin for me but um, sure but even like there you just you don't know what the position right. really is and one of the interesting things was they were saying well what about like really niche job boards for like a specific industry where then you could potentially monetize those connections right. and so the way i was thinking and, so, and funny enough I saw an Instagram ad for, it was called like social media jobs .to. Okay. And so I clicked on it I went to the website and it was a niche job posting thing. So they were finding the really interesting social media job postings mm -hmm. in the GTA and, they just aggregate and putting them, them up and oh. then you could, Hey, do you want to put your email in and get notified when new social media jobs come up? Yeah. And, but they were, but the only focus of it was social media jobs and okay. nothing else. Yeah. And so it kind of like struck me, like if you're kind of already doing this, it might be an interesting place to play with like, um, you know, 
here's the interesting jobs in tech in the GTA. Yeah. And then having people that listen to the podcast potentially fall into checking out a, a product like that. Hey, mm -hmm. and I don't know how much work it would be or if you actually would want to do it, but it might be a natural kind of little side piece that could add to that. Okay. Niche job yeah. board. Uh, that sounds really cool. I mean, yeah. I could see a need for that because it's like I noticed that at least depending on like what you're looking for, like like if you want to find like agency work, like what I do right now and, and like consulting and stuff like that, like, you know, there's the big firms you apply to, but like I didn't realize how many like agencies were in Toronto. Right. Like I didn't realize that Quantum Mob was a company until yeah. like somebody I knew got hired there. Right. And, uh, and, and now I'm learning about them and they've got big clients, like they're doing well, they've been around for three years and yeah. it's, but like, you know, I maybe maybe even just that like because right. that's kind of the field I know right yeah um, yeah that'd be I, so cool yeah that's a kind yeah. of an interesting thing but I yeah. think but I think what what the inch so I think the and so I'm thinking about like a name now for it mm. we don't have to go that far but I've just you know I, I, mean? I have a corny name good that okay, what, is it? Of. what is so it so it's like this week in tech with Matthew Weeks <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> or like weekly weekly Toronto tech or something like yeah. That. It's basically just a pun, like that it has to right. be a pun, I feel like, because everyone I've ever told this about uh, mm. to has always recommended some sort of Weeks pun. Right. And I feel like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Your last name being Weeks, it'll, you almost have to do it. Yeah. Yeah, right. you're right. <laughs> that doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and I think even maybe, um, like, uh, Tor but, Toronto Tech Stories, or I, but the name of it, makes it feel like it's going to be something about the tech news right. rather than the tech players. Yeah. I don't know. Like getting uh, started in tech or yeah. uh, like, I don't know. Like, uh, I'll keep, yeah. I'm going to keep rolling it around as we talk about other shit, but yeah. Okay. Or like, I like the process you talked about, like the process guy being mm -hmm. the process guy, like kind of yeah. like, yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll come, yeah. we'll circle back. <laughs> okay. So now let's talk about the logistics and the, the technical piece, yeah. right? Cause that's always the, like, there's a lot of different programs. There's a lot of different options. There's a lot of different equipment. There's a million different things. Yeah. So a couple of things that I did wrong at the beginning is I had one of those, just, um, those Yeti. This is the blue, you, blue, bo the yeah. snowball, right? Or the, no, it was the, it was the gray one, Okay. which was okay, but it wasn't good for interviewing people. Right. So it, it did have, you can change it to different directions and stuff. I just found that it picked up every sound under the sun. Right. So then I went crazy and I bought a $400 mixer okay. and these are like $190. These stands are actually only 10 bucks. Oh, okay. These Amazon are on Amazon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then these were like 15, but these mics. And then, so I think the mistake that I made is, is that these are great. They do produce high quality. But something that's USB based would have been a lot smarter. Oh, because you just plug it into a computer. You just plug it in right into the computer. Yeah. And so this is great if I were to have like four people on and they would all go into the mixer and I can do this and this and that. Right. But honestly, if you're not producing, if you're just talking yeah. and you just need people hearing you talk, you yeah. don't need to go this far. Okay. So, so not the 190. They was such an overkill. Yeah. So um, I was reading uh, a blog post by Tim Ferriss. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. he was talking about his equipment. Yeah. And he, there, so the same brand, the Audio Technica, but he has one that he uses for like when he travels around. I actually have ordered them for while we're traveling. Oh, okay. So they're, they're, they're same brand, Audio Technica, which is a good brand. Yeah. They're 60 bucks. Okay. And oh. then they're, but they're like, you can hold them. Or there's like a little stand for them. So they're a little bit skinnier. Okay. The reason I like the ones that you can hold is like we could be doing this on a couch. Or if you're at like um, if you're at a, one of these, what are they called? Hackathons? Oh, yeah. Like hackathon. Right. Okay. And if there was like a couch, you could literally just sit with someone on a couch and you could both hold the mic. Oh. And you wouldn't have to worry about arms and like deep, deep configurations. Yeah. So I really like that idea. Okay. Um, they, yeah, they're USB based or they also have the attachment for this. So if you ever wanted to get like the full audio cords for it, you could. Mm -hmm. um, but if I were to go back, that's what I would probably do. Okay. Is just get the handheld ones because that comes yeah. with like a little stand anyway in case you were like, you were doing it online or whatever, like on Zoom. Yeah, I kind of like that. It's like a like, like classic interview show, like just stick a microphone to something. <laughs> no, I would have a street type stuff. No, no, I would have two. Okay. <laughs> you both have one of them. There you yeah, go. Yeah. 
So I would do that instead of this, even though these are like sleek looking, especially if you're not going to do video, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> right. No one's going to see what it looks like anyway. So right. I, I'm, yeah. yeah, I don't think I would do video because yeah. I would want to keep it super Simple. low key, I think. Yeah. Um, so I have like a microphone mm -hmm. that I bought for my brother when he was doing, he wanted to start a rap career when he was like nice. 14. Got it. And uh, he, so it's like this, like, I don't know what it is. It's mm. just a USB old mic, but I think I might just go the, like, just go the route of like, guess, get the nice one with a stand or whatever, yeah, yeah. Or, like the like, cheap. Okay. So 60 yeah. bucks is not bad. Yeah. It's that's, not a bad starting point. Yeah. Um, then it gives you the flexibility of the little stand. Or again, if you're like out and about, because mm -hmm. I think a great place to take advantage of these conversations, especially if they're not going to, they're 15, 20 minutes long. Yeah. Right. Is to be like, while you're at these events, like just find a quiet room and yeah. you just have two microphones in your backpack and just, and just oh. host it right there. Like that's don't, great. don't go crazy. Like with where, just do yeah. it everywhere, anywhere. That that's. Yeah. 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 That's like, uh, that's, that sounds terrifying, but I think right. it's like, it would be such a cool, yeah. Or even, yeah, okay. Because then it can huh. just be wherever you come across. You don't have to worry about that much back and forth and how it's going to come together. Yeah, like it's planning like, like weeks ahead. And hey, just jump in a quiet room and Yeah, okay. Go. So then, so that that's from the equipment side. So again, if you've got a computer that's got at least a couple of USB jacks, yeah, or you can get right. one of those ones that's the splitter, yeah, where it has the multiple prongs. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, my operation seems going to kill me because I spent a lot of money on this shit. Yeah. But to be honest, like I'm thinking about just switching over and okay. doing it from like a sitting, like a more casual spot sometimes. Yeah. I don't know. We'll no, see. I could see that because then you could just like chill on the couch. Or... Mm -hmm. And then I could literally be anywhere. Like yeah. this is a disaster to have to bring somewhere. Right. I yeah. went to do, so I did this LinkedIn event last week. Yeah. Um, and I took this and the cameras and the, the hub and all this shit yeah. to another place to film. Yeah. And like, it was just, it was such a joke. You're almost like a walking sound crew. Like it was uh, horrible. when the people go in with like the wheelbarrows with all their instruments right. and stuff, it's like, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, so like yeah, the two USB ones. Uh, and I hear that the quality is like decent. I looked up a lot of reviews and they they review pretty well. Okay. So it's a $60 audio technica one. Yeah. And then do you use PC or Mac? I have a MacBook. Yeah. Perfect. So there's the free, there's a free product on Mac called GarageBand. Yeah. Yeah, I've used it to make it like ding, ding, ding. Like, <laughs> I never knew you could do actual like editing though. Yes. So a couple things that I really screwed up at the beginning with GarageBand is, yeah. so you plug both mics in or you plug the mixer in and then GarageBand detects it. So you say, I'm going to start a new new product project and you say, I'm going to choose microphone mm -hmm. because there's like, you know, you can plug in whatever instrument, but there's one that's just straight microphone. Yeah. So you put that in and that's the stream is your audio now. If you have multiple microphones or the reader pulling in the two, if you just have the one audio stream, it's going to take the words from here and the words from there and put them on one stream of audio. Right. Yeah. The problem with that is that if one person's really loud or really quiet or you need to try and adjust the sound, yeah. you can't. Oh, okay. Ever. So my first three or four, you'll yeah. see like, no matter how, what distance people were, it was like all in the same wave yeah. and it sounded horrible. And you could hear everything. Uh, I've heard yeah. a few of them, like I've, but it's like Some I've done the, the old ones. Yeah. 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 So, um, so one key thing with GarageBand is yeah. you open one audio stream and then you add another stream. And so then you say like USB mic one is this and you name it. And mic. that's what you were doing earlier when you were like mic and yes. cat. And so, but names. you have to create the separate channel yeah. because what you do at the end is when you're playing them through in GarageBand, so you can edit it all from there. Right. And it's just yeah. like, all you really have to edit is like, do the levels need to go up slightly or do they need to go down slightly? Do you go like frame by frame or like chunk of time by chunk of time or you just yeah. do it the whole thing? Yeah. So when you're, when you're looking at it after yeah. and you're scanning across the audio blips, you'll see like if something went really, if a thing went mm. really high, yeah. then you'll know, okay, that might not sound great. So you can set what's called, like, I don't actually know what the technical name is, but it's basically like you can set a ceiling yeah. for the audio. Feel like I know studied it. this at one point. <laughs> I never did. I did so. digital media. So. Fair enough. So all I know, all I know is it yeah. like it caps like the height of the, the and it audio. Just like levels it out or it levels whatever. it out. Yeah. Okay. So outside of just like and and so what I do ahead of time is with the microphones plugged in, yeah. I have us have a conversation so I can see. Oh, is one of us going like really high mm -hmm. at any point? And if we if one person's a little bit too high, you just turn the the uh, what is it called the it's like the the pickup. Okay. The yeah. Um, 
Whatever. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> not technical. <laughs> all matter. all I know is just a knob that's like the plus or minus. Yeah. Um. And so if you if one person's talking and their levels are consistently really high, like in the yellow. Yeah. So it's like green and then yellow and then red. Okay. So if we're talking and one of us is in yellow, you just turn the level down mm -hmm. so that it it throttles it back. It basically turns it down ahead of time. Oh, you do this through the through the mixer then. I do I do it um, through the mixer, but yeah. it has the setting right in GarageBand. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. you can adjust it right in from GarageBand. So okay. as long as you pay attention to that before you hit record, mm -hmm. then it shouldn't, nobody should be able to spike. Oh, cool. Okay. So we've very seldomly had to really adjust audio. Yeah. If we do them on like Zoom, or if it's like a video call, sometimes the right. sound from the other end, we got to like crank that a little bit. Okay. Because I might be like on my mic and they might be in like a headset mic and it might not be quite the same. Yeah. Um, but if you're sitting with the person and you can test it and just adjust, it's the, that's the only thing you change. Mm -hmm. It's just that first audio level on both to make sure nobody's natural speech is spiking. Right. And, and you just like have them talk for a little bit, check it out and then just toggle it and you're good and then... yeah okay cool so we've never had to edit beyond that with audio ever wow. okay so what you can do is just after you're done you'll see the waves yeah and just make sure there's no like point where it goes like really high because that's where it will sound bad yeah so it's basically like if the mount the spike goes way up but again if you've adjusted it from the beginning and then nobody screams into the mic you shouldn't have right. a problem like if i'm like laughing maniacally or something it'll probably right. spike a little it bit could. And you might yeah, have yeah. To like... <laughs> um and then right from inside garage band if those levels don't need to be adjusted yeah. you basically keep those levels both active and then you export it so you cut the beginning because we'll maybe have talked for a few minutes before mm -hmm. and then once we're done before i hit stop on the audio yeah. there might be a little bit of conversation so you can literally mm -hmm. just move the start move the end yeah. And then export it as an MP3. Okay. And you're done. Yeah, and that's it. It's just done. easy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then where do you what do you do with that file? You just upload it somewhere? So the beginning of the podcast process is a little bit of a pain because you have to register your okay. podcast with different channels. Right. So I have to apply at like podcast.itunes.com and then Google Play Podcasts and mm. Spotify. So you have to create an account for each, for each one. one. Okay. At, at first. Yeah. Then what you do is um, you upload it into an RSS host. Yeah. So there's like podcast.rss or podcastrss.com, Anchor. Yeah, Anchor I've heard of. Um, Anchor's really good because yeah. they're free and they've got a lot of analytics oh, and a lot free. of great okay. tools. And I think they make their money. I've actually just switched to Anchor. Yeah. So they make their money if you monetize the podcast. Because I think something to do with what, whatever you're like, okay. if you're going to host ads in it, they take a cut or whatever. Right. I don't, for me, it's, I don't have any intent. On yeah. that, it doesn't it's not, doesn't fit with what I'm I don't doing. Know if it makes sense. Actually, the so, software that I'm coming out with yeah. in three weeks is going to be the sponsor of all my shows. Okay, and I'm just going to say it right into the beginning of the yeah, podcast. Yeah, because you kind of have like your your business. It's like a right. lead gen thing right. for you, so it's like you kind of like you've already got a sponsor no matter right. what. Like I guess yeah. I'm sure you've gotten tons of like clients or whatever through just the yeah through some of the ideas people hearing about it. Yeah. I actually had somebody ask us to go and help them produce an episode of a podcast. Oh, that's like, so cool. I'm like, I'm not an engineer, but like I have fancy microphones, so I guess I can. Yeah. I, know how, I know how it works. <laughs> oh, you sure. just explain what you did to me and then it's done. It's like... Basically, yeah. 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 Oh, cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, so then what you do is um, you take the episode, you write a, like a description and a whatever, yeah. the sh and the show notes, which mm -hmm. are usually like, I write like a description of what, what it was all about. Yeah. And then I'll, whatever, like if we talk about any like tools or resources, I'll link those. Mm -hmm. And then if we, if you've got like Instagram or your business has a website, I'll put like all the yeah. links out to that. Okay. Um, you dump that into Anchor. Mm -hmm. And then, so all the Spotify and Apple and Google and all that has your feed. Yeah. Basically it's just a, a, an RSS feed URL. Okay. And they they already have it. So when you upload to Anchor, like they've it auto yeah. refreshes every whatever hours, and then it just sends it out to all of them. So usually within download. a couple hours, okay. it's up across every platform. So you don't have to touch like like once you've set it up, you touch, don't touch it. Do you yes. have to like you set up like a description or whatever? I guess. Yeah. In the, the site so the initial cover art, which right. I mean you've got people, you probably got the skill set to do that. I recommend yeah. doing it if you search for like uh, album art or like a cover art. Okay. on uh, canva they've yeah. got templates for people too uh, okay so that's the that's the company in uh, australia applied for <laughs> there you um go. i love canva like there you it's go. so convenient like yeah. i used to use it for all my social media when it's yeah. so, like back when i was doing freelancing i tried to do like marketing and stuff right. never really like <laughs> went anywhere but like right. yeah so i used it. it all the time so you just cool. do pod like cover art 
I had a graphic designer actually make oh, okay. it, but that's yeah. an option. Well, I'm going to go cheap. So. There you go. Yes. so you just search for album art. Yeah. And then it's got like a whole bunch of album templates. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. And then you can upload like a picture of you and some text and whatever, okay. however you want to structure it. But yeah, so if you look up album art, I actually did this. I did a talk about podcasting not yeah. long ago. And I, that's the screenshot I used was album art search in Canva. And yeah. there's like a shitload of options. Oh, perfect. Okay. So you can grab some kind of a template from there and that should put you in the right direction. Okay. Um, but then, yeah, so every time you basically just put your audio into Anchor, mm. Anchor spits it out to the feed, and then like later that day, it's just everywhere. It's up. Yeah. So after you set up the initial account, it's easy. Now, what I will tell you, which I made the mistake on, is you need an initial episode to start the accounts. Oh, okay. So I didn't have that the first time, so yeah. I was like went through the process, and I like set up all this shit, and then I was like, oh, none of them are active. Yeah. Or a bunch of them, like I got to a certain point, and it's like, oh, like you give us the feed so we can upload your first one or you can't start your account. So record your first episode and put it in anchor before yeah. you create all these accounts. Okay. Cause I was going to yeah. go home tonight and immediately, yeah. uh, write out or right. fill out a form. So that's good. To no, know. <laughs> don't do that. Um, what you can do as a yeah. cheat. So the way I got mine up and running, cause I didn't have any guests. I didn't even know what the hell I was going to do. Really? When I started, I was like, I'm just going to make it up. And I had a, a hip hop artist called Golden G who we've been, we had been talking. I was like, yeah, dude, just fucking come to my house. We're going to talk shit. And he's like, all right. Yeah. But before I had that, I just, I basically said, Hey, this is like uh, Hey, welcome to the content sessions podcast. I'm the host, Mike Maul. In the coming weeks, I'm going to deliver da, 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 da. So I actually recorded like a 30 second episode. Mm -hmm. I uploaded it so I could get all the channels started. Okay. And then I deleted the episode after I had the first real episode. Oh, so you didn't keep it up or anything? No, so because no one's gonna, no one was gonna see it. No one was gonna really know. Yeah. Right. Who's gonna come across it? Nobody. Right. Yeah. So I created like a thirty second blip until I had an episode or two, and then I started uploading them, and then I took that one away. Okay. So that is the cheat. <laughs> you right. could just. Record. I'm gonna do that tonight. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you can just record something on there. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and it's like it's really that simple. Once you set up all those accounts once, it's just like pump it in. Yeah. A couple big recommendations I have. Be consistent. Mm -hmm. There's a flow to mine now that's like every Wednesday and we produce extra content around it. We create different files. But the thing I like about it is people uh, on social, like I can tell that they're waiting for it now. Because when it yeah. drops and I announce it, it's like, oh, cool. Thank you for what, like... There's a, there's something about consistency with social and marketing and people. But they just like it. Yeah. So pick a day or bi-weekly or once a month or whatever it's going to be. Yeah. Um, and at the beginning, you don't have to. Just come as a... But then as you kind of build a cadence to it, mm -hmm. figure out when they're going to launch. So it's like, right. hey, every other Wednesday or the last Thursday of every month or whatever it's going to be, however many you can get out there. Yeah. Um, but be super consistent with it because people will go back and check and wait. Mm -hmm. And I... It's funny, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about it, but I know there's some podcasts that I love, like King and the Sting, and I don't know if you, it's a comedy no. one. Oh, okay, cool. It's Theo Vaughn and Brendan Schaub. Oh, okay, I like that. Hilarious. I love Theo Vaughn. I listen to Theo Vaughn's yeah. on YouTube sometimes, so. He, so it's a funny-ass podcast. Brendan Schaub's on so many podcasts now. Yeah, okay. he is. So <laughs> theirs comes out on Thursday, and I, I like to listen to it, like, sometime on the weekend while I'm, like, cleaning. Yeah. But, like, I won't touch it on the Thursday. But every Thursday, like, it pops into my, oh, because I'm subscribed, so it pops up into my channel. I'm like, boom. Now I know my Saturday cleaning is going to be awesome now. Okay. And I have a relationship with it coming out on Thursdays. Yeah. So people have people really like the consistency. Okay. So whatever that ends up being, yeah. just try and, like, as best you can stick to it because people really like yeah, it. Yeah, like, I noticed that with, like, so, like, YouTube, like, I follow, like, Philip DeFranco and stuff yeah. like that. And, like, I literally, like... I know Monday night, yeah. I know exactly where I'm going to get my news, even though it's yeah. all American, so it's yeah, a little yeah. bit different, but yeah. there's always something useful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, okay. So and that's really specific. How right. do you, so say you go on vacation, right? Yeah. I, I like to travel like every yeah. quarter or whatever. How do you not miss it? Do you work while yeah. you're on vacation or? So this episode. Yeah. So we're November eight. Mm -hmm. This is my December twenty first episode. Okay. I've got I've got them recorded seven in advance. Right. So okay, I could yeah. stop for a month and I'd be good. Oh, perfect. Okay. So batch them. Yeah. So what I would recommend, depending on how long they're going to be, if mm -hmm. you've got a free Sunday and you've got a list of people you want to hit up, mm -hmm. just so what I used to do is I used to book Sunday at or Saturday at ten a.m., mm -hmm. twelve, two, and four. Okay. And I would do four in a day. And then I would be good for a month wow, coming okay. out every Wednesday. Yeah. That's how I did it. Oh. So okay. what I would do is the next time you're at one of these events, yeah. if you've got like a communicator like that you can talk to the people ahead of time or like a Facebook group, be like, 
hey yeah. guys, starting a podcast, I want to interview people about how they da 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 da, would really love a bunch of you to participate, mm-hmm. and then just fucking record five or six of them while you're there. Cool, and yeah. And then you've got a, two months worth of shit right there. And you just go to like, I could even just do it at the event, like mm-hmm. just go to like, so I'll sign up, I could go to an event right tonight, find yeah. an event, and then just sign up, and then I guess, I guess I'd have to message the guest list or something. But... Yeah, or just show up. Or show and up. And ask people, you know what I mean, just say... Like, actually something that I consider doing at marketing conferences, yeah. and I'm probably still going to do it, is I have a marketing podcast. Do you want to be on right now? Okay. I just put it on a t-shirt. <laughs> and people are like, yeah, okay, cool. Come on, let's go. I've got the microphones in my backpack. I'm not kidding. That would be so awesome. I'm actually really considering it yeah. at, at the next event I go to. That's, yeah, I think that yeah. would work really well. <laughs> you know, I want to know about, I don't know. But but I think, yeah, doing that, or if, the, if that meetup or that whatever has a Facebook group. Yeah. Hey guys, not trying to steal attention away. Just letting you know that I've got this podcast. I want to interview interesting developers about how you got started. Mm. Um, let me know, and then just book a bunch and just do them there. Okay, yeah. Um, that's probably an easy way. Because my immediate assumption was I was like my immediate like thought was I was just gonna go out and message all of my friends who work at different companies and yep. hopefully interview them. But like I know that as soon as I do that, it's gonna like take a while to like get them to coordinate to yeah coordinate yeah and actually feel comfortable doing it yeah and so and friends are a pain in the ass yeah to do it okay. right? they just, <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean it's like it's like oh i know you and i you're doing this thing and that's cool bud and then like oh but we're gonna like sit because because it's weird man like yeah. sit, the first time i like interviewed someone i knew like well yeah it was awkward as fuck because we're used to like being in a certain way and then I'm like yeah. no I'm gonna structurally ask you about and pick apart your marketing right want to talk now and it was, it was like it was fucking weird yeah it's a little we're, bit more we're, intense you're staring sure. at each other like a couple awkward times and I was like okay no, no no come on this is you know what the fuck you're doing just keep it going right um so it's weird yeah with like friends and family it's odd because you're now interviewing and you're trying to like you're publishing content that's part of something that you're putting out as a person mm. and you don't want it to be like super laughy and super dumb right yeah like just like uh okay yeah so. i can see that because it's more professional like keep it yeah. like kind of it and it can be fun yeah. it's just weird interviewing your friends right yeah it just is oh, I can see that. so you can do that the best way that i've done it is like if you if you follow people on linkedin or you're connected with them on linkedin or instagram mm-hmm. um best way to do it is do a voice dm it works yeah. so linkedin and instagram both have voice dms okay so you literally record a voicemail that sends to the person Okay. Huh. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so on Insta, so the, the hard thing with Instagram and LinkedIn re- outreach is yeah. like people, especially like leaders and other people tend to get a lot of messages. Now people mm-hmm. that are senior software people in other companies, maybe not as much, Just they don't get as bombarded. Time. But if you're looking for like people that own companies and leaders and stuff, yeah. what I do is I send them a voicemail on yeah. LinkedIn. That's just like, Hey, super nice to meet you on here. I host this podcast called whatever. I really think you'd be a great fit. Would love to chat more about it. If you're into it, let me know. Yeah. So then it DMs that person and all they see is a little audio blip and they're like, the fuck is this? Right. So because I get so many messages, if someone sent me text, yeah, I've hey, I'm never received I want to do this. Of, so of that's the key. Yeah. Yeah. It, it works incredibly well. So you see it and you can't see what any of the content is until you press play. Until you press play and hear the person's voice, there's no like, I can't just read it and be like, ah, I don't know, I'll think about it, or I don't care. Like you have to play it. And when you have to play it, you're like, I don't get a lot of voicemails on LinkedIn. Like it's weird, yeah. but it works super well. And everybody responds and to it. It's more personal really. Mm-hmm. Like you're not like, it's not like a template. Like I'd yeah. have to specifically say it to somebody. Right. And like, yeah. Yeah. Oh. So that brings a way bigger like personalized approach yeah. and it will make way more people say yes. Okay. And it'll make it really hard to ignore your correspondence to them. Mm. The other the other big thing, and I found this with my LinkedIn online conference and with the podcast, is like people don't get asked to do this kind of stuff a lot. Right. It's still kind of new. Like it's like it came from a spot where it was like, hey, it's like you do a TV interview, which is mm. like 10 years ago, that's all it was. But not many people got TV interviews. It was uncommon. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, like guest posting on a blog, but it was still not as like podcast is like it's such a new medium still. People feel like there's so many out there and so saturated, but it's not. There's yeah. not that much out there. Huh. So people are just honored at the idea of coming on and talking about themselves or sharing their stories. Like mm-hmm. everyone will say yes, unless they're like really nervous or they or they're just genuinely too busy. But right. like you're the outreach, the response rate that you have in your head is super fucking wrong. Yeah. By like fifty percent. 
we, we were like, oh, like maybe like three out of every ten would say yes, like probably seven. Okay. Legitimately, people just they just like doing it. They like being asked. It's cool to say, hey, I want to hear about your story. Come tell me about how you got started. And like yeah. people will super. Yeah. I guess if it's like yes. short too, like it won't mm -hmm. be as too much of a commitment. Yeah. And then I guess so. If I'm doing it, like say maybe they don't live in Toronto and I want to interview somebody or yep. like, I, cause I'm not, I'm can't even, I'm thinking about mm -hmm. like who I'd reach out to. Yep. There's just a few people. Yeah. I, I can only mostly think about Twitter. That's the right. problem. Sure. But, uh, and I don't think you can do voice on there. I guess. I'm not I sure. don't know. Or you just look them up on, on LinkedIn. Yeah. Oh, true. Right. <laughs> sure. And, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So for remote oh. ones, I use zoom. Yeah. Which is like an uh, online hosting conference thing. Yeah. Um, it's really, really good. So a couple tools, Calendly, yeah, is I a use, tool that I use to book yep. my meetings. So that integrates with Zoom. Yes. Okay. So if you have a Zoom account mm -hmm. and you give someone your Calendly to book a call with you at their convenience, based on your availability, mm -hmm. it will automatically create the Zoom link meeting. Yeah. And then all you all you both have to do when it comes time is just click the link in the calendar invite, and you're already there. So yeah. there's very little setup. There's no back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. So I voice, oh, awesome, yeah. I voice DM. If they say I'm interested, I say, cool, here's a little bit more info. Mm -hmm. um, my calendar is here. It, you can book something that's convenient for you. Yeah. They fill out the Calendly. It sets up a Zoom, and that's it. I don't have to do any work. Okay, yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's, that's the whole like planning process. Yeah. I do very little like, hey, send me a couple dates. Like, I don't have fucking time for that. Yeah. And I don't want to. And you just set up your that. schedule when you can do it. Right. And you don't have to worry about like. Yep. Because I know Calendly, like it blocks out. If you have something else coming on, yes. going on, it'll block it out and stuff like yep. that. Yeah. And so what I'll do is like, if I'm going to go to some thing or if we're doing something at the house or whatever, I'll yeah. just block. If so, mine are like every day during the week, 5.30 mm -hmm. and 7 p.m. Right. So I'll just block off a, a block on my Gmail that says no podcast. So then it disappears from Calendly. Oh. Okay. If I'm going to be busy that night or if I just yeah. don't want to deal with it or I don't want to. Yeah. Um, so that's that's an easy way, and then it like eliminates all the back and forth and all the setup. It's yeah. really straightforward. Oh, that's awesome. That. Okay. Cool. Yeah. 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 Cool. Cool. Um, yeah. So that's how you get guests. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of curious, like the prep. Do you prep for the podcast at all? I don't, yeah. but I'm very much an on the fly guy. Yeah. So when I. Even when I give presentations, mm -hmm. even when I'm pitching like new business, yeah. like I don't do anything. Like okay. if I'm coming in to talk to you, your company for an hour about like marketing, yeah. I won't look up anything. Okay. I want to I want to dissect it and I want to come up with it on the spot cuz my brain works well that way. Yeah. But that's me. Okay, so, cuz I always like just from hearing your podcast, like you did the one recently on the uh like I can't remember the name of the software. Mm -hmm. It was like for video Bonjour. Share. Bonjour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Great. like it seemed like you knew the business so well. So yeah. I thought you like researched. I was, I was using the product already. Yeah. So that's why. Okay. Um, yeah. no. So I'll like, I'll maybe go on the website for like 30 seconds to get the gist. Yeah. But I won't read about any of the, like about us or the cadence of what they do. I don't want to okay. know because then it feels forced when I'm asking them to tell me, yeah. I don't want to know. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. I'm not, I, that's how my brain works. So yeah. for me, I, I do very, very little, almost no prep. I jump on the call, we go back and forth. I don't have anything prepared, any questions. Yeah. And then I don't even listen to them after. Right. So if there's any consistency, it's just bullshit luck. I have okay. no idea how it happens. That's awesome. No. I have no I, idea. But that but yeah. that works for me and that might not work for oh, you. Oh, it would totally work for me. I, <laughs> there you go. I've done so many presentations and I got a reputation for doing it live. Sometimes yeah. a little too much. You sure. Know, you gotta have some prep if you're But if you know if you but... know the core and my yeah. core is I wanna know about your business yeah. and then I wanna know how you market it and then I wanna help you. Yeah. I know every, I know a lot about marketing and I can come up with concepts on the fly that most people, not most people, can, I don't want to say like that most people can't think of, but my instant reaction, because here's the thing with marketing, mm -hmm. the answer is always the same. Yeah. It's just how you contextualize and what, con what content you create and that's it. But the answer is always the same. So I don't have to prepare. I know what the answer is. Yeah. It's create valuable content for people that will buy things from you yeah. and then find out where they live on the internet put the shit there yeah it's like a lot of like tactical stuff and then right but what i notice is like when you're interviewing somebody you've always got like a creative idea that yes. like it's like um like throwing spotify ads right. for like the preview of a song for yeah. golden g like right i was just like oh wow that's so yeah. cool like maybe i could do that with my podcast right. or something like that and, and so sometimes that comes as a function of i've already done it for somebody yeah. in my marketing career um 
but but yeah for me like it's just like i focus on online mediums yeah so if i know what you're trying to do and who your audience is then it's easy right oh i'm selling to like i'm selling this product to women cool go on instagram mm -hmm. and then make this type of content and then yeah. run an ad on there like it's it, yeah. it there's only so many variables to it which yeah. is why it comes out naturally for me right so if if you know what you're trying to get out of that conversation mm -hmm. um the only thing i would change about mine and I, I got it from the my first million podcast he always asked like at the end like hey if you were to go back and like you couldn't do the same thing you were doing now like how would you do it differently or what would you be doing now instead being what you know and like i don't do that yeah. it doesn't really fit my content right now i'm actually thinking about making some changes anyway okay to some of the content in general so i would just think like i like the idea of having that like one Thing that kind of solidifies that one consistent piece right where like it doesn't matter where the conversation goes okay then also just like what would be your one so here's what yours will be yeah hey what's your one piece of advice to the five years ago you when you just started when you were trying to find something in a job mm. oh you know what i wouldn't have written i wouldn't have been so snarky on my resume or oh i wouldn't have this or this or that so ask them that question that then comes back and serves the audience yeah you know okay yeah and make no, that the perfect. one piece that anchors it yeah and you know what would you tell your yourself from the first time you were looking for a job based yeah. on what you know now? Oh, I would say like if you didn't know all the technical hopes, right? If society. you didn't, yeah, um, like if you didn't know like the technical aspects that you know now, yeah. but you had like the experience mm -hmm. and you were to go back and try to start over, yeah, what would you do? Yeah, and like how would you get started? And what would you, what strategies would you take to like get to that level that you're at now? Something like that, like, yeah. Or how would yeah? Okay, you cool, know what I mean. Yeah. So that then it brings that. Uh, one one piece of consistency, which mine currently doesn't, which is yeah. how I'm, I'm starting to rethink about it now. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the ones that I'm really into have that, they circle back to something. And right. I'm like, oh, cool. And I don't know how to fit it into a marketing consultation yet, but I'm still kind of fucking around with it. Yeah. But yeah, I think that for you, because that's what you're talking about. Yeah. And if you're talking to a leader on the other side, mm -hmm. is like, hey, if, when you, what would be the thing that you would tell you when you, before you got into the leadership, like all the way back from there? Because mm -hmm. the people that are aspiring here might then aspire to go the leadership or management or whatever. So yeah. then, cool, this serves them yeah. and this serves the people who are listening to the podcast at the beginning. Yeah, so, so it's kind of like different tiers mm -hmm. of like your progression. Right. Like, But then that one question helps journey. anchor and serve every kind of member of that audience. Right, and then mm -hmm. they'll, they'll kind of like, yeah, okay, because like on the My First Million, like I didn't even really notice that he, I mean, I listen to every episode, I yeah. love it, and then I, I'm guessing, yeah, I am yeah. familiar with that question, but I just didn't even realize that. What happens is when time. you start podcasting, you yeah. listen to podcasts super different. Yeah. Like nothing, like I, I don't even listen for the content, I'm like cadence and structure and all, like these right. little <laughs> nuances now, like that's what I pay attention to more, yeah. just because when you start doing it, you're just like, but it's like anything, right? Yeah. If you weren't making software before, you wouldn't look at the user experience, oh, yeah. user interface. And then when you start doing it, you're like, everything you see, you're like, oh, that's a user interface nightmare. Oh my God, this like this little button is the smartest thing ever. You look at it differently. Yeah. So when you're doing it, you look at it differently. Okay. So when you start listening to podcasts and content, you'll start listening to it really differently when you start to execute them. Yeah. Okay, pretty, that'll be interesting. Yeah. I wonder if that'll ruin podcasts for me. No, it doesn't. I still okay. I still love them. Because it's my, uh, I use podcasts as my escape from work. So I wonder if yeah. they'll turn, well, this yeah. is going to be a hobby no, anyway. It'll so. be good. Yeah. You'll like it. Okay, hey, cool. Any yeah. other thoughts? Any other questions? Um, I'm trying to think like, uh, so do you like, so you don't do any preparation for it, but like, I guess, like, how do you come up with questions or like on the fly? Because I noticed you asked like, so like they'll, someone will be going on like a bit of a tangent mm -hmm. about like, um, maybe like they have something else to say, right. but then you'll ask a question that just goes back. Yeah. I'm trying to think of an example, but. It's because I frame everything around why I'm doing it. Right. So. And I, I had a bad habit at the beginning and my, my recent episodes are down to like 10 minutes of the backstory instead of 30 mm. because the 30 minutes of the backstory is not why we're talking. Yeah. It's a marketing consultation on a podcast. Yeah. So the 30 minutes of like all these nuanced questions about tell me, like when you were a kid, did you think it was going to go this way? It's like that shit doesn't matter. It's not serving the why of what I'm doing it for. Mm. So I've gotten and I but you'll see in like the first 10, 15, I would let we would go down these super long rabbit holes of the backstory and education and childhood and stuff. And I was like, wait. 
no, that's not serving what the point of the podcast is. Yeah. The why is I'm trying to teach people about interesting ways to think about their marketing. Mm -hmm. And that's not being served by talking for 30 minutes about your backstory. Right. So we do five to 10 minutes on your backstory and then cool, let's talk about the business now. Yeah. That's how it circles. And you kind of like, cause when, what I always found is like, it seems like you, you do your intro, you get to know the person mm -hmm. and the business. So like how it got started and then you dive deep into it. Yeah. So it's, it almost transitions really well. Like I right. feel like maybe I could do something cause like, okay, so what do you think is like a good length? Like it right. should be like 10, 15, 30 minutes. Y You'll figure that out. Yeah. There's no answer. True, yeah. I thought, I thought, I had actually, before I ever started, I wrote down, I was like, cool, so it's going to be three minute intro to the guest. Yeah. And then two minutes about their business. And then about three minutes about how they do their marketing. And I had it like structured. Yeah. And then the first conversation I had was like an hour. And I was like, ooh, fuck, that's not 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know how I can do it in 20 minutes because understanding the person and their business and their their current marketing is a big piece mm -hmm. and it also helps the audience frame up oh that's how i've done this or or i didn't even think about that right and if they don't have the framework of what's being done my ideas on top of that don't make sense yeah so it had to be longer so they okay. now they're 45 minutes to an hour but you'll figure it out yeah. right you'll you'll have a couple where you'll publish them and you're like i have a couple that were like an hour and 45 minutes and i was like fuck we just like rambled on forever yeah and then some of them that are that long i'm like no it was fucking great like it was really a lot of really detailed shit on point i'm yeah. like so there's no answer right and do you worry about like losing listeners or something if you um, probably not right no. it's just like <laughs> no it doesn't matter yeah. none of this none of it matters you yeah. like taking this too seriously is like for me it was like an outlet it gets me in touch with people that i usually wouldn't get access to yeah. i get to have interesting conversations and i get the prestige of having a podcast and it oh, gives yeah. me great social content totally yeah. fuck it that's it that's so true. i don't i don't care i i could have 10 people listening i could have ten thousand. yeah it doesn't really as long as are, it's, are you yeah. are you willing to share like how many listeners or like how, what's your like typical like listen rate or so or when you started and like mm -hmm. now um yeah so I haven't looked at the subscriber numbers for a while yeah most of our traffic is YouTube because we run ads okay yeah, on YouTube yeah. so we get between two and five thousand views on YouTube right but a bunch of those are paid yeah paid views but my average view time on my paid views is over twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like it's really like... Like you just like yeah. sponsor like a yeah. huge video. Mm -hmm. It's not like a 15... Yeah. Like they have 15 seconds, yeah. but they just kind of like... I just do the whole thing. That's a cool yeah. strategy. Like I don't care. Does it yeah. cost more to do that or... No, it costs like two cents a view. Oh. I, okay. I, every episode I, I, I put like 20 bucks. Fair enough. That's okay. it. And I get good traction on it. Like, but my followership on my subscribers on YouTube is like 40. Yeah. There's almost none. Yeah, but um, you're just like, you're, your only goal is like to get, like, you just want to put it out there. And... I want the right people to stumble upon it. Yeah. So I know that my channels are really good, like Instagram, putting the content on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. um, and then putting it on YouTube. Okay. And then I don't, I want to start looking at like numbers and traction at some point. But for now, what I know is that the people that come on the show, yeah, their friends, and their fellow business peer group yeah. are like, hey, I need help with this. And they're like, oh, fucking talk to Mike. He's really smart. He knows right. marketing really well. That's all I care about. Yeah. I don't care if there's 10 or 20 people listening to oh, it wow, on iTunes cool. because I already know what it's doing. It's almost like it's it's like the, the guest is like for you, the, right. making the guest feel like they had a good experience mm -hmm. is, is more important than like the listener actually caring about the content right. or whatever. Cause yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Because for me, it's like it's like a blog, right? Yeah. I can put a blog on my site. I can't because I can't write. But you yeah. can put a blog on a site. And like, who? it doesn't really matter how many people get to it. But the key is if yeah. I know that this will serve a Facebook group or a LinkedIn group well, I'll reach out to the administrators and be like, hey, I wrote this monster piece. It's pure value. There's no sales stuff in it. Yeah. Can I put it in here? And if 10 of them see it and one of them's like, my God, this blew my mind. I want to hire them. Then yeah. who fucking cares? Yeah. Okay. My, it's a, it's a lead gen and it's a piece of, um, builds credibility for the business. Mm -hmm. If people new to us come in and see yeah. that they they go on our website and they, whatever, they see a bunch of episodes mm -hmm. and then they see me giving advice and that's all I care about. Yeah. I don't care about the following at all. Oh, that's great. So yeah, whatever, whatever comes out of it. Yeah. Sure. But I, I haven't looked at the numbers like on Spotify. I don't know how many people subscribe on totally, iTunes yeah. or Spotify. I have no idea. I like that because like, I guess for me, like I'm making it so much more high stakes than mm -hmm. it really has to be. Like yeah. it kind of just, just ends up being like a cool, 
casual conversation with somebody yeah. like i mean even this like right. coming in i was terrified but right. this is like just a conversation like, right is... and but it's crazy because people somebody yeah. listening to this is gonna get some inspiration or some motivation from it and it's gonna help one person yeah. same thing with the marketing hey and i've had people email me saying hey i watched your episode on x i tried this it was fucking great i love you yeah done i'm fulfilled I don't care. That's good. So yeah, it's just, just keep pushing it out and don't like, you should still promote it. Let people know, post it on Instagram, all yeah. that stuff. But like, but yeah, don't, don't worry too much about the following. Yeah. If it's not, if it doesn't have to be a core source of revenue for you. Right. I mean, have fun. I'm not going to monetize right. it. So the more you have fun with it, the better the content's going to be anyway. Yeah. That's the key. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool, man. I think that's like, I'm pumped to do this. This is Love awesome. <laughs> All right. So good. Thanks for coming on. Good yeah. luck with it.